Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of Plants vs. Zombies. So, we only have one thing left to do. We have Survival Endless Mode. But, before we start that, there are some things I want to do. <laughs> I want to buy up the remaining things in the shop. So if we go to the shop, you'll see, wow, I've got $80,000. That's enough for the final seed slot now, isn't it? Well, it is. But I also want to buy the Mushroom Garden and potentially the Aquarium Garden as well. So, we're going to start by buying the Mushroom Garden. I wanted to show this off in my iPhone version of the game, but as it turns out, I just can't record that. So, if I had a Mac, it would be easy, but because I have a Windows computer, it just does not want to connect with my iPhone, and I can't record the screen from it. So there we go. So, I got, I got a plan. We buy the Mushroom Garden. Now, if we go to the Zen Garden, what we can do is if we go over here... To move your plants between the gardens, purchase a wheelbarrow from the shop. I thought I already had the wheelbarrow. There's the wheelbarrow. It's 200G. That's fine. We got plenty of money. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our wheelbarrow. Going to go up our puff shroom. And as you can see here, we've got this new mushroom garden. And if we take our mushroom plants over to this garden, they wake up and now all of a sudden they need nourishment again. <clears throat> Hit detection on this is a little bit wonky at times. Take Mr. Doom Shroom over as well. And last but not least, the Hypno Shroom. There we are. Now what my plan is... I want to buy the seeds, the extra seed slot. The problem is, we got all of these plants here, and what I'm going to do is I made a bold decision. I'm going to sell every plant I have in the Zen Garden. That's going to give me enough money to purchase the remaining things in the shop. And in particular, the reason why I bought the Mushroom Garden first is because when I grow these guys to full size, which shouldn't take too long, I can sell them for, I believe, 10,000 G a piece. So that's 50,000. And I've only spent 10,000 to actually get this garden, so that's going to be a net gain of 20,000. That'll be great. I can then buy the aquarium garden, I can sell all my other remaining uh, Zen Garden plants, and that should give me enough to get the final seed slot, and then I can take on the wonder and joy that is Survival Endless. <laughs> so that's kind of how, how we're going to do things. We're going to buy up everything. I really wish that I could do Last Stand Endless on the iPhone version, but again, it's really dumb that I can't get my iPhone screen to work properly on my Windows computer. I got an app where I could, like, use it as an actual camera, but it won't actually record the iPhone screen. And not only that, but there's also a giant watermark there, so that's not ideal. It's fine. I mean, if, I, if in the future I happen to find a way of getting the iPhone screen to properly record, then great. Otherwise, well, them's the breaks. And while we're here, we're going to start selling our other plants. So we're going to sell all of our marigolds. I'm just curious to see how much this is actually going to give me to sell all my marigolds. Except the ones that I actually ended up before, just before starting the recording, I ended up buying the marigold seeds for the day. Which was kind of a dumb move, because this is my last recording session of this, but whatever. They're here now. Oh sweet, 80,000 again, that's awesome. Alright, and now what we can do, we can go and purchase the Aquarium Garden. If we go back, we can now move our lily pad over here. And what's nice about the Aquarium Garden plants is that you don't actually need to water them. Which makes sense, because they're in a tank. If we right click we can tap on this, the screen but nothing happens. So he'll just chill there and then after an hour passes we can grow him and the other mushrooms to full size and then we can just sell everything. And this should give us more than enough money to buy the final thing and take on Survival Endless. So I'll see you guys in about an hour. Alright and here we are back sometime later and all of our plants are now ready to be grown except our marigolds because I screwed up buying them. But that's fine, all of these plants here in the Mushroom Garden. Booyah, here we go. Two gems per plant. So 
we making bank? Oh yeah, 60,000, and we can fully grow our lily pad as well. All right, and now <laughs> we don't have any real purpose of growing all of our Zen Garden stuff to full size. There's no achievement for doing that, and it would take way too long for this Let's Play, so we're going to sell. Oh, okay, 10,000. That's a lot of money for one uh, plant. And we can sell all the guys here, 10,000 apiece. Oh, that's just wonderful. Actually, we have 80,000 now. Which means... dun da 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 We can finally buy that max seed slot. More slots! Now you can choose to take 10 seeds with you per level. Boom, shakalaka. And we don't even need to sell anybody else. We sold our puff shroom, but everybody else can stay. You hear that? You get to stay! Woo! All right, and that's it for Zen Garden. I may as well keep those plants around. I mean, in case I ever do want to go back and get them all. I won't, but I mean, there's no real point in selling them because there's nothing left for us to buy. We got everything. So all we have left to do now is to play Survival Endless Mode. I have, I think I've played this like once before in the iPhone version. I think this was in the iPhone version. I've looked up some strategies on how best to deal with this and apparently People have put a lot of time into devising survival endless strategies, so I'm gonna basically take my favorite looking one out of all of them, and let's begin. Survival endless, we're at the pool, and we got just your regular bunch of zombies, and look at all the stuff we can take. So obviously we're gonna need sunflower, and we're gonna want twin sunflower. Lily pad and cattail. Let's see, coffee bean, fume shroom, gloom shroom, pumpkin, melon pult, and I think winter melon. I think that's a good starting lineup for all- oh wait, no, hang on. We're also gonna need like potato mine and squash to deal with those early zombies. Hmm, if that's the case, do I really want- oh yeah, and also you'll see the plus sign at the end of uh, all of these professional plants, so to speak. And basically every single time we plant one of the upgrade plants like Twin Sunflower or Cattail or Gloomshroom, it's gonna increase in price. Which means planting a lot of them is going to be tough. And if that's the case, I'm actually going to hold off. I'm not gonna take Twin Sunflower with me. I'll take Melon Bolt instead. I can- I only really plan on having maybe four Twin Sunflowers uh, on, the, on this, so let's work with them. So our first strategy is basically going to be plant as many sunflowers as we possibly can. Because, uh, <laughs> we're gonna want a hu- we're gonna need a massive amount of sun to build up the army that I am currently planning for, so... Definitely gonna need our sun. And due to our low sun supply, this is why I brought potato mines and squash to hold off the zombies as needed. I'm also gonna try to save up enough to start planting some gloom shrooms. And of course, a cattail. I think we're only gonna need one cattail just to deal with the balloon zombies, but it'll be helpful to get him down early. And actually, the, uh, the strategy that I looked up did not even include cattails in the design, so I'm not sure if that means that there won't be any balloon zombies? I have to imagine there will be. We're gonna put our cattail right there. I'm also going to put a pumpkin on our cattail because he's going to need protection. Now we got to start saving up for the gloom shrooms. Yeah, like I said, we're just spamming the sunflowers wherever we can. Eventually, we are going to be replacing all of these sunflowers. But at the beginning, they're going to give us a massive amount of sun, which is exactly what I want. There we go. Our first Gloom Shroom. We're going to put some Gloom Shrooms in the front over here. 
and they'll help deal with pretty much all of the aquatic zombies as well as any zombies that want to try attacking the center of land lanes. Like, I, I could plant another cattail here, but I don't want to. I don't know why I planted a potato mine there. I really don't. There we go. That should help take out the zombies. Also, I really should bring up, just as a reference, the, uh, the guide that I'm using. Just to get it in my head where I want to put stuff. All right. I'm gonna start putting down some melon bolts. At least here and here. So yeah, as you can see, the cattail now costs uh, 275, and the gloom shrooms now cost 250, a whole 100 extra sun. But it's gonna be worth it because gloom shrooms are really, really overpowered. Oh, and we gotta survive two flags at a time. I see. Wow, that sun actually disappeared. Surely you don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Are you stupid? That's a very bad idea right there. The sunflowers are just so happy to be here. I also want to point out something. We haven't seen every zombie type in the game yet. There's one zombie type that will only appear in Survival Endless and Last Stand Endless if you're playing the iPhone version. So yep, fun times ahead. Alright. Start putting some more melon bolts in- or I'm putting the melon bolts in the top lanes and the bottom- at the top lane and the bottom lane. Because... They, these are the lanes that are out of reach of the Gloom Shroom, so they need some extra support. So yeah, Gloom Shrooms, they're getting expensive, but they're worth it. They actually don't increase at an exponential rate. It seems to, to be increasing their price linearly. By that I mean every single time I plant one, it seems to go up by 50 sun. And not like, first it goes up by 50 sun, then 75 sun, then 100 sun, then like 150 sun. Again, if it seems ridiculous that we're planting this many sunflowers, I mean, it kind of is. But it's, it's gonna be worth it. You're gonna see. Alright. Oh, hey, we've got catapult zombies already. Cool. Alright, so we're taking lily pads, we're still taking these guys, uh, coffee beans, blah, 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 blah. Yep, and pumpkins. Now we're gonna start taking kernel bolts and cob cannons, along with twin sunflowers. Then maybe spike... Oh, definitely we want winter melons, and we need umbrella leaves to deal with the catapult zombies. Am I forgetting anything? I 
don't think so. That should be good. Ready, set, plant. There we go. Let's start putting our winter melons down. I should just be joyous. At this point, oh, okay, we should start putting in the umbrella leaves we need, so. Just in preparation for the uh, catapult zombies. I know some setups will also actually go out of their way to put down uh, gold magnet trims. This is one mode where if you get far enough, gold magnet trim actually can be alright if the enemies start just dropping insane amounts of cash all the time. But as for whether they do drop insane amounts of cash all the time, generally not. I'm gonna put some gloom shrooms over here, which may seem weird, but the reason we're doing this is in preparation for when digger zombies start showing up. And again, because we need to use Gloom Shrooms, we gotta work with their uh, internal timer. Let's also start putting down some Kernel Pults to build our first Cobb Cannon. And as you can see, we are now shoveling away our Sunflowers, so... This is why I said we really need a lot of Sunflowers early, because we're not gonna have very many Sunflowers long term. that. Shoot, I didn't bring melon bolts. So I just shoveled that guy away for nothing, basically. I'm actually not going to plant any more twin sunflowers. These three twin sunflowers are the only ones I'm going to have, and they're going to be the only sun-producing plants we have for a while, actually. Start putting pumpkins in the back here for when we inevitably start seeing the digger zombies. And long-term, the gargantuars. I also, I also, next round, will start putting down Spike Rock prematurely. Cobb Cannons are going to get very expensive. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. I also need to keep an eye on the pumpkins on the Gloom Shrooms up here. Because I really, really need to make sure that those are well protected. Woo! More zombies approaching. Alright, now we got bungee zombies and now we got balloon zombies. Okay. But, again, the balloon zombies are going to get taken out by the cattail. Do the balloon zombies get taken out by the catapult plants? I actually don't know. Alright. So, we still want to continue taking the gloom shrooms, because we do still need to put more in the back. We're going to start taking double pumpkin from now on. Melon pult, winter melon, spike weed, spike rock. Okay, hang on. Not double... Not double pumpkin just yet, because we still are building up other things, but... There we go. That should work. Start putting 
the spike rock down as well. As you can see, like, we had 3,500 sun last time, now we're down to 2,000. Because again, the plants that we're planting are... are getting costly. I'm very happy that we're getting all this stuff built up so quickly. But now, yeah, look, our sunflower supply is almost gone. And now we're down to just a few hundred sun. How sad. Oh no! You took my twin sunflower! I thought my gloom shrooms are gonna help with that. No! He ate my cob cannon! That monster! This is not going according to plan. Destroying that cop can, that's gonna really set me back, actually. Like, that's taking a significant dip in my sun, because look how expensive they are. I got all my spike rock up. be the last places where I put the cob cannons, to be honest, because those are in the most vulnerable places. <laughs> Lovely. Well, we've completed six flags, now we got the gargantuars coming, alright. Beautiful. Double pumpkin. Hmm. Colonel Bolt Cop Cannon for sure. Uh, I might bring like squash to help deal with potential gargantuars. I actually might do that. Uh, we don't need any more gloom shrooms, which is nice. And honestly, like maybe, maybe cherry bomb. Maybe cherry bomb. Why not?
right, still so- oh, ladder zombies, fun. Okay. Well, we're still gonna be taking Melon Bolt, Winter Melon, Double Pumpkin, Colonel Bolt, Cobb Cannon. I'm gonna bring Spike Rock back, because I want my Spike Rock again. And apart from that, I'm gonna bring... No Jack in the Box zombies, which is good. This is the mode where ja if a Jack in the Box zombie blows up as soon as he spawns, like, dear lord. It's, like, the most unfair pain. Ho, oh, ho, hum. Honestly, Ice Shrooms can be decent. And so, you know what? Let's do it. Let's bring some Ice Shrooms. Once we have all of our cob cans up and running, we can basically just endlessly barrage them with constant streams of cob missiles. Which is gonna be good, because we're gonna kind of need to have that up and running to deal with the final zombie type we have yet to meet. Probably should be saving the cob cannons for when the gargantuars come out. Hundred sun for a single cob cannon. Honestly, we have reached the point where gargantuars are not that threatening of an enemy. At least not when you've got this many cob cannons. We've all, we're also positioning our cob cannons in such a way that it's going to be hard for the zombies to eat them. Even like things like digger zombies or imps getting thrown are not going to be able to reach the cob cannons, which is wonderful. As you can see, like, Gargantuar over there can't even reach the Spike Rock. Alright, here we go. The final wave. There we go, we'll repair the pumpkin. And what a slaughter. Ten flags completed! Oh no! Jack in the Box zombie. First. All right. Uh, we still are gonna bring those around the Colonel Pult and Cobb Cannon because we do still need to build more. We'll take Winter Melon because there are a couple of Melon Pults we can upgrade. I'm gonna bring Lily Pad, this guy, and Gloom Shrooms in case stupid old Jack in the Box Zombie Boy blows up a bunch of my uh, sea, <laughs> all bunch of my Gloom Shrooms. 
And then... Ice Shroom. And let's do it. At this point, we've pretty much finished our setup. We need to build the final Cobb Cannon and upgrade those two guys into Winter Melons, and then we're good. Gentlemen, our cop cannons are locked and loaded and ready to obliterate everything. We now have eight cop cannons. It's gonna be hard to stand up against that. And yeah, we just have three twin sunflowers left. Nope, no, 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 get away from my plant ants. Out of all the zombies in this mode, Jack in the Box zombies are by far the most terrifying to me. By far. They're the only ones who could just instantly set you back several thousand sun. Not an exaggeration. This is it. This is our setup. Now it's just a matter of making sure our pumpkins are uh, getting repaired. Let's, let's just see how far we can... Oh, here we go. Here we go. The final zombie type in the game. The Giga Gargantuar. If you thought the regular Gargantuar was bad, you've seen nothing yet. Giga Gargantuar is the same, except he has, I kid you not, twice as much HP as the regular Gargantuar. It takes four instant death plants to bring down the Giga Gargantuar. He's insane. And this is exa and this guy is exactly why we have so many cob cannons. Now, as far as our plants, we're always going to be taking double pumpkin. I'm also always going to be taking gloom shrooms, just in case Jack in the Box zombies happen to blow them up. Along with ice shrooms, I think we'll also maybe bring. No, I don't think we're going to have enough time to. We're not going to have enough time to wake up the doom shroom, so he's actually a no. We'll do cherry bomb. Uh, what else? Oh, and we'll do Spike Rock. 
we might need the extra defense potentially. Let's rock! So now I'm going to be pretty judicious with when and where I use my Cobb Cannons, because I really need to save my Cobb Cannons for when the Giga Gargantuars come out. Because bringing them down without Cobb Cannons, especially if they're in the topmost or bottommost lanes, oof. It takes forever. Thankfully, they still only have one Imp, and the Imp is the same strength as the regular Gargantuar Imp. But he, because they throw the Imp whenever they're at half health, that means, uh... He's, like, we're not gonna be able to really kill him before he can throw the Imp. And this, again, this is where the Melon Pult splash damage is really nice. So, like, we got this massive cluster of zombies, but yet these free Winter Melons are able to kind of hold their own because of that splash damage. But if they, if they start getting too close... I, I am wary if they get too close. I don't want them eating my cop cannons. That's a very big no-no. But yeah, as you can see, the water lanes, not a problem. Like, the Gloomdrums just slaughter them all, and occasionally we'll have to heal the pumpkins there. But that's, that's honestly a rare occasion. And the middle lanes as well, because of the Gloomdrums, just get slaughtered. It's really the top lane and the bottom lane that are the most dangerous. Nope, I did not want to launch you. I hope that doesn't prevent the flame. Oh my gosh. Anytime there's a huge wave, my, my PC starts overheating. <laughs> I can tell by the sound it's making. I was like, ah, too many zombies to render. Well, yeah, in case you were, uh, in case you were disappointed by the amount of zombies we were facing off in the regular adventure levels, the, yeah, the, if you want the real zombie apocalypse, here it is right now. And again, this is basically what Last Stand Endless is like, except Last Stand Endless, you don't get sun plants, but you get, I think, 500 sun after every, like, every wave that you beat. No, I did not click out of the window, actually. So these are still the regular Gargantuars. The Giga Gargantuars have red eyes. Oh hey, a Zen Garden plant! If you play last- if you're playing uh, Survival Endless, you can get any Zen Garden plant here, not just the one- the pool plants. Oh, there's our first Giga Garg. I saw his red eyes flash. Goodbye. This is also different because in Survival Endless we have to deal with two flags before we can repick our plants. In Last Stand Endless, it's every one flag you can repick. I am amazed at how sturdy our pumpkins are. I feel like in Last Stand I noticed I have to replace my pumpkins a lot more than this. Oh hey, Zombonis are here! I don't think Zombonis ever really appeared in La uh, Last Stand I noticed. Fun. I mean, again, just the same thing we're doing. Here we go. Honestly, with this strategy, you're going to be able to survive kind of indefinitely. Like, people have, people survive hundreds and hundreds of flags. And the more flags you survive, the more money you're going to get. Like, as you can see, the zombies are dropping money a lot more frequently now than they were at the start. So once you get up to, like, 
Let's get up to flag 100. Sure, plant a gold shroom or two and watch them just pick up money for you. Like, look at that, we've made $10,000 here. This really is like the best way of making money. Survival endless. Also, in Last Stand Endless, the uh, upgrade plants don't increase in price. They're, they're a static amount. So I spam Spike Rock, because Spike Rock keeps the Giga Gargs at bay. I don't like the football zombies being in the top and bottom lane. I, I really don't. Even when they get hit by winter melons, they're still fast. Oh, here come the Zombonies. Zombonies are fast and they cannot be uh, slowed down. I don't like I don't like Jack in the Box zombies. It's okay, as long as we. S <clears throat> No, I did not want to do that. Okay. Well, that kind of sucks. Disco Zombie? I was not expecting to see you in this mode. But, okay. I'm gonna put some spike rock up here as well, just to give these cop cannons a bit of extra protection. <laughs> the game is running at. 20, a 20% 20 lower frame rate when I'm playing in <laughs> this endless mode. Hey, are Disco Zombies going to appear in the water lane? No. Thank you for the free money.
Why did it wait? It's like, okay, I know you've cleared like 16 flags, but now we're really serious. Now we're bringing out the big guns. Like, what's could be, uh, what could be harder than the Giga Gargantua? It's like, Disco Zombie, duh. It's like, uh, really? <laughs> I don't think so. I love how the giant spotlight still drops on the Disco Zombie, even though it's broad daylight. That's not where I said to launch it, actually. Oh, hey, Digger Zombies finally show up as well. Good for them. Oh, wow, we have a lot of sun now. Once you get the setup all... Already, it's... Mm. I don't want you smashing my spike rock if I can help it. Oh dear lord, the slowdown. Toast, and you're just you're just you're toast. Wow, <laughs> that's fantastic. All right, I I can't believe I'm about to do this. I'm actually bringing the gold magnet shroom. I'm gonna replace one of my twin sunflowers with the gold magnet shroom. Even though I said it was a bottom tier plant, and I stand by that. But there is so much money flying around, and I have so much sun, I'm, I'm willing to forego that. And we really only need one. You know, I'm kind of amazed that the game can render and animate this many sprites on screen all at once. Like, considering the sheer amount of zombies and they each have their own AI, and like, their own animations. Like, it's pretty impressive, actually. Oh, I guess Gold Magnetrum can't attract all the money on screen all at once. Has a cap of like six or something. Okay, maybe maybe he is garbage. Okay, now that's not happening. You're not taking my stuff. Oh, I see what's happening. The catapult zombies are hitting that spike rock and weakening it. At least that's what I think is happening.
You know, guys, I feel like this strategy might be a little broken. Hey, Gold Magnetrum, are you gonna, like, you know, do your job? Pretty great if you did your job. Just gonna slowly re replace all my pumpkins with the orange pumpkins. Even though I probably like the color of the white pumpkins a little better, but... Okay, here we go. Zombonis and Gar Giga Gargs are back. Lovely. I don't really have to plant anything at this point. This is kind of crazy. Immortal achievement! Cool, we reached... <laughs> we completed 20 flags. So we got the achievement that we were looking for, but I'm gonna just keep going, see how far I can take this. <laughs> Eventually, I'm gonna stop if I'm like, okay, I'm not like, it's pretty clear that my strategy is just gonna keep working. I love how the developers are like, you know, some of these upgrade plants are super busted in this mode. Maybe we should try to balance things out by making them cost more and more the more you plant them. And like, even with that nerf, they're still disgustingly good. Gold magnet room is slipping. Oh, thank goodness. Jack of the Box Zombie blew up, but he was in the bottom lane, so he didn't actually blow anything up. Except my uh, spike rock, but that was already on Death's door. If he had blown up one lane above, he would have taken out at least two of my Gloom Shrooms. Okay, now things are getting a little scary.
We've almost gotten enough money to replenish the 10 seat slot. Eight, that cost 80,000 that we bought. <sighs> Honestly, at this point, I think I've. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna voluntarily choose to stop. It'll save my progress if I won't ever want to go back, but I mean. I think I demonstrated pretty clearly that the strategy I have is disgustingly good, and I could kind of keep it up indefinitely. I still had several thousand sun in reserve. And at this point, the, like, the zombies, like, they can't really get that much more intense in terms of volume, because they're already coming in at such a high rate that they're, like, causing my game's frame rate to decrease by 50%. If they actually did come in at a higher rate, I'd be worried that my PC would crash. So... I'm just gonna set, decide to call it there, but as you can see, bada beam bada boom. Every single achievement we have received. So, well. Oh wait, no! I was gonna end the let's play. There's one other thing we gotta do. Now that we actually have every entry, we need to read all the entries in the almanac. Because they actually are, do have some interesting, like, uh, there are some interesting funny writings in here. So, let's start with the plants. So, Pea Shooter. How can a single plant grow and shoot so many peas so quickly? Pea Shooter says, Hard work, commitment, and a healthy, well-balanced breakfast of sunlight and high-fiber carbon dioxide make it all possible. Sunflower. Sunflower can't resist bouncing to the beat. Which beat is that? Why, the life-giving jazzy rhythm of the earth itself, thumping at a frequency only Sunflower can hear. Is that so? <laughs> I want to explode, says Cherry Number One. No, let's detonate instead, says his brother. Cherry number two. After intense consultation, they agree to explodinate. Walnut. People wonder how I feel about getting constantly chewed on by zombies, says Walnut. What they don't realize is that with my limited senses, all I can find, all I can feel is a kind of tingling, like a relaxing back rub. Well, that's good. Some folks say Potato Mine is lazy, that he leaves everything to the last minute. Potato Mine says nothing. He's too busy thinking about his investment strategy. <laughs> Folks often tell Snow Peach how cool he is, or exhort him to chill out. They tell him to stay frosty. Snow Peach just rolls his eyes. He's heard them all. Yeah, everybody thinks they're so clever, but uh, no, you're not the first person to think of these puns. Chopper almost got a gig doing stunts for the Little Shop of Horrors, but it fell through when his agent demanded too much on the front end. Chopper's not resentful, though. He says it's just part of the business. Repeater is fierce. He's from the streets, he doesn't take attitude from anybody, plant or zombie, and he shoots peas to keep people at a distance. Secretly though, Repeater yearns for love. I only recently became aware of the existence of zombies, says Puffshroom. Like many fungi, I just assumed that they were fairy tales or movie monsters. This whole experience has been a big huge eye-opener for me. Sunshroom hates sun. He hates it so much that when it builds up in his system, he spits it out as fast as he can. He just won't abide it. To him, sun is crass. I was in a dead-end job producing yeast spores for a bakery, says Fumeshroom. Then Puffshroom, bless him, told me about this great opportunity blasting zombies. Now I feel like I'm really making a difference. <laughs> Despite Gravebuster's fearsome appearance, he wants everyone to know that he loves kittens and spends his off hours volunteering at a local zombie rehabilitation center. It's just the right thing to do, he says. <laughs> Good on you, Gravebuster. Zombies are our friends, asserts Hypnoshroom. They're badly misunderstood creatures who play a valuable role in our ecology. We can and should do more to bring them around to our way of thinking. Yeah, but by forcing them to take hallucinogenic drugs, I don't think that that's the best way of dealing with it. Who's there? whispers Scaredy Shroom, voice barely audible. Go away! I don't want to see anybody, unless it's the man from the circus. Ice Shroom frowns, not because he's unhappy or because he disapproves, but because of a childhood injury that left his facial nerves paralyzed. <laughs> You're lucky I'm on your side, said Doom Shroom. I could destroy everything you hold dear. It wouldn't be hard. Lilypad never complains. Lilypad never wants to know what's going on. Put a plant on top of Lilypad, he won't say a thing. Does he have start startling opinions or shocking secrets? Nobody knows. Lilypad keeps it all inside. I'm ready, yells Squash. Let's do it! Put me in! There's nobody better! I'm your guy! Come on! What are you waiting for? I need this! Free Peter likes reading, backgammon, and long periods of immobility in the park. Free Peter enjoys going to shows, particularly modern jazz. I'm just looking for that special someone, he says. Free Peter's favorite number is five. <laughs> well, duh, what else would it be? <laughs> I'm totally invisible, Tangle Kelp thinks to himself. I'll hide here just below the surface and nobody will see me. His friends tell him they can see him perfectly well, but he'll never change. <laughs> Jalapeno says, he's not going to explode, not this time, but soon, oh so soon. It's close. He knows it. He can feel it. 
His whole life's been leading up to this moment. Hockey is Spike Wood's obsession. He's got box seat tickets, uh, season tickets. He keeps close track of his favorite players and constantly cleans up in the office hockey pool. There's just one problem. He's terrified of pucks. Everybody likes and respects Torchwood. They like him for his integrity and for his steadfast friendship, for his ability to greatly maximize P damage, but Torchwood has a secret. He can't read. Well, you know, you could, it's never too late to learn, you know? People wonder if there's a rivalry between Walnut and Tallnut. Tallnut laughs a rich baritone laugh. How could there be anything between us? We are brothers. If you know of what Walnut has done for me, Tallnut's voice trails off and he smiles knowingly. Yeah, it's nice. Sea Shroom has never seen the sea. It's in his name. He's heard about it, but he's just never found the time. One day, though, it'll go down. Plantern defies science. He just does. Other plants eat light and excrete oxygen. Plantern eats darkness and excretes light. Plantern, uh, Plantern's cagey about how he does it. I'm not gonna say sorcery. I wouldn't use the term dark forces. I just... I think I've said enough. She's prickly, sure, but Cactus's spikes belie a spongy heart filled with love and goodwill. She just wants to hug and be hugged. Most folks can't hand with that, though, but Cactus doesn't mind. She's been seeing an armadillo for a while, and it really seems to be working out. <laughs> uh, we generally advise people not date outside their own, uh, species. When Bulver was five, he had a shiny new birthday cake. Bulver made his wish, huffed and puffed, but was only able to extinguish about 60% of the candles. Instead of giving up, though, he's used, he's used that early defeat as a catalyst to push himself harder than ever since. Yeah, use your failures as lessons, and then they're not truly failures. You only really fail when you give up. Yeah, I'm a Gemini, says Split Pete. I know. Big surprise. But having two heads, or rather one head and one large head-like growth on the back, really pays off big in my line of work. <laughs> oh man, says Starfruit. I went to the dentist the other day and he said I have four cavities. I've got, count it, one tooth! Four cavities and one tooth? How does this happen? Oh, I'm sorry, Starfruit. Uh, Pumpkin hasn't heard from his cousin Renfield lately. Apparently, Renfield's a big star. Some kind of, what was it, sports hero? Peggle master? Pumpkin doesn't really get it, he just does his job. Magnetism is a powerful force, very powerful. Sometimes it scares Magnetrum a little. He's not sure if he can handle that kind of responsibility. Cabbage Bolt is okay with launching cabbages at zombies. It's what he's paid for, after all, and he's good at it. He just doesn't understand how the zombies got up on the roof in the first place. That's true. How did they? <laughs> I'm a pot for planting, yet I'm also a plant. Has your mind exploded yet? Nope. Colonel Polt is the eldest of the Polt brothers. Of the three of them, Colonel is the only one who consistently remembers the other's birthdays. He bugs them about it a little, too. Hey guys, hey, says Coffee Bean. Hey, what's up? Who's that? Hey, did you hear that thing? What thing? Whoa, lions! Yep, Coffee Bean sure does get excited. Lane diversion isn't just Garlic's profession, it's his passion. He carries on advanced, he carries an advanced doctorate in redirection from the Brussels University. He'll talk all day about lane ve ve vectors and repulse arrays. He even pushes things into alternate uh, avenues at home. Somehow his wife puts up with it. Sproin, says Umbrella Leaf. Did you like that? I can do it again. Sproin, woo, that's me popping up to protect stuff around me. Yeah, just like that, exactly like that. Believe it. Marigold spends a lot of time deciding whether to spit out a silver gold or a silver coin or a gold one. She thinks about it, weighs the angles, she does solid research, and keeps up with the current publications. That's how winners stay ahead. You know how you'd be a real winner, Marigold, if you only generated the gold coins? Uh, just saying. That would be better. There's no false modesty with Melon Pult. Sun for damage, I deliver the biggest punch on the lawn. He says, I'm not bragging. Run the numbers. You'll see. Gatling P's parents were concerned when he announced his intention to join the military. But honey, it's so dangerous, they said in unison. G Gatling P refused to budge. Life is dangerous, he replied, eyes glinting with stealing conviction. It was a crazed night of forbidden science that brought twin sunflower into existence. Thunder crashed overhead. Strange lights flickered. Even the very roaring wind seemed to hiss its angry denial. But to no avail, twin sunflower was alive. Alive! <laughs> I've always enjoyed releasing heavy fumes, says Gloomshroom. I know a lot of people aren't cool with that. They say it's rude or that it smells bad. All I can say is, would you rather have your brain eaten by zombies? No. Woof, says Cattail. Woof, woof, woof. Does this confuse you? Did you expect to say, me to say meow like a cat just because the word cat is in my name and I also look like a cat? That's not how things work around here. I refuse to be pigeonholed. Oh, brother. 
Ah, Wintermelon tries to calm his nerves. He hears the zombies approach. Will he make it? Will anyone make it? <laughs> How did I end up here? Asked Gold Magnet. I was on the fast track. Corner office, full benefits, stock options. I was going to be vice president of Midwestern operations. Now I'm here on this lawn, in serious danger of being eaten to death. Ooh, a coin! Spike Rock got, just got back from a trip to Europe. He had a great time, met some wonderful people, really broadened his horizons. He never knew they made museums so big, or put so many paintings in them. That was a big surprise for him. <laughs> What's the deal with Cobb Cannon, anyway? He went to Harvard, he practices law in a prestigious uh, New York firm, he can explode whole areas of zombies with a single corn launch. All this is common knowledge, but deep inside, what really makes him tick? Oh, can we not view the imitator? Uh, the Imitator is definitely, definitely has an entry in the Almanac in the iPhone version. Where is he at here? Can you really, did they really just are like, oh, we can't fit him in, uh, sorry. Alright, well guess what, guys, I've actually, uh, <laughs> wait a second. Uh, did it erase? No, it did not erase all of my data. I'm like, I've. Where's the almanac? I mean, I've pulled up the iPhone version of this game, and I'm trying to find the almanac, but it's not like- Ah, oh, here's the almanac. Yeah, I'll pull up- I'll pull up Imitator's almanac entry on the iPhone. I remember the zombie wars back in 76, says Imitator in a raspy old man's voice. Back then, we didn't have all these fancy pea shooters and jalapenos. All we had was guts. Guts and a spoon. <laughs> There you go. I am disappointed they don't have that guy's entry in the almanac in this one. And now the zombies each have their own entry as well. And for some reason the Giga Gargantuar does not appear in the almanac, which is kind of strange to me. <laughs> this zombie loves brains. Can't get enough. Brains, 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 day in and day out. Old and stinky brains, rotten brains, brains clearly past their prime. Doesn't matter. Regular zombie wants them. Oh, make no mistake. Flag, flag zombie loves brains, but... Somewhere down the line, he also picked up a fascination with flags. Maybe it's because the flags always have brains on them? It's hard to say. It's true, they do. Conan Zombie shuffles mindlessly forward like every other zombie, but something made him stop, made him pick up a traffic cone and stick it on his head. Oh yeah, he likes to party. Some zombies take it fervor, aspire more, push themselves beyond the normal into greatness. That's pole vaulting zombie right there. That is so him. Buckethead Zombie always wore a bucket, Part of it was to assert his uniqueness in an uncaring world. Mostly he just forgot it was there in the first place. Newspaper Zombie was this close to finishing his Sudoku puzzle. No wonder he's freaking out. <laughs> so every time you destroy Newspaper Zombie's newspaper, he was about to finish the Sudoku puzzle and that's what makes him fly into the rage. He's got his screen door from the last in it. <laughs> he had his screen door from the last inexperty inexpert an expertly defended home he's visited after he ate the homeowner's brains. Oh yeah, we never actually showed what happens when the zombies eat your brains in this, did we? Oh, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll, I'll make sure to show that. <laughs> Football zombie gives 110% whenever he's on the field. He's a team player who delivers both offensively and defensively. He has no idea what a football is. Dancing Zombies' latest album, Grand Brains Internet, is already rocketing up the undead charts. <laughs> Backup dancer Zombie spent six years perfecting his art at the Juilliard, <laughs> the Juilliard Performing Arts School in the Zombie New York City. <laughs> it takes a certain kind of zombie to be a ducky tuber. Not every zombie can handle it. Some crack. They can't take it. They walk away and give up on brains forever. The zombies don't breathe. They don't need air. So why does Snorkel Zombie need a snorkel to swim underwater? Answer: Peer pressure. <laughs> Not to be mistaken for a Zamboni R brand ice resurfacing machine, Zamboni and the image of ice resurfacing machine are registered trademarks of Frank J. Zamboni and Company Incorporated, and Zamboni is used with permission. For all your non-zombie related ice resurfacing needs, visit www.zamboni.com. What if I want to visit Zamboni.com? Zomb the zombie bobsled team worked hard to get where they are. They live together, eat brains together, and train together to become a cohesive zombie unit. <laughs> the dolphin is also a zombie. This zombie shivers, not because he's cold, but because he's crazy. Balloon zombie really lucked out. The balloon fiend really works, and none of the other zombies have picked up on it. Well, apparently that's true. He ate, like, five of my cob cans. Digger zombie spends three days a week getting his excavation permits in order. 
Sproin, sproin, sproin. That's the sound of a powerful and effective zombie doing what he does best. Little is known about the Yeti zombie other than his name, birth date, social security number, educational history, past work experience, and sandwich preference. Roast beef and Swiss. Hey, roast beef is legit. Bungie Zombie loves to take risks. After all, what's the point of being dead if you don't live a little? <laughs> he picked up the ladder for just $8.99. Of all the fiends Catapult Zombie could launch with his catapult, basketball seemed like the best and most obvious choice. When Gargantuar walks, the earth trembles. When he moans, other zombies fall silent. He is the zombie other zombies dream they could be, but he still can't find a girlfriend. Well, yeah, that happens. Imp may be small, but he's wiry. He's proficient in zombie judo, zombie karate, and zombie bare knuckle brawling. He also plays <laughs> the <laughs> He also plays the melodica. Edgar George Zombos achieved his doctorate in thanatology in only two years. Quickly mastering thanatolog thanatological technology, he built his fearsome Zombot and sat about establishing absolute dominance of his vocal subdivision. <laughs> nice job, Dr. Zombos. Alright, uh, one thing we gotta do, we gotta show what happens when the zombies actually reach your lawn. <laughs> so this should be the, the quickest and easiest le uh, level to just let them steal our brains on. Provided we actually get to see the full cutscene and it's not just the shortened one. That would stink. Alright, here we go. These zombies should get to the exit. And by exit, I mean the our house. <laughs> Yep, he enters the house. No! The zombies ate your brains. <laughs> wow, we literally never had the zombies eat our brains, except when we literally went out of our way to do it. That That's just how easy this game is. Like, getting some of the achievements is tough, but, like, the actual gameplay in this is very easy. But it's also very fun. Definitely my favorite tower defense game, and probably my favorite, like, iOS, like, mobile game that I've ever played. Yeah, that's Plants vs. Zombies. That's like literally everything I could show off in this. I wanted to show off the Last Stand uh, game mode outside of the minigame mode in the iPhone version, but I, I I have a Windows PC and an iPhone. They do not play nicely together. I cannot get the screen recorded, so I'm sorry. Basically everything in last the Last Stand mode, though, is just kind of an alternate version of survival. Pretty much everything that you do in survival also works in the Last Stand mode, so... Yeah, that's it for Plants vs. Zombies. This was a super fun Let's Play to do. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this series. And, uh, obviously, we're going to be doing another Let's Play series just in a little bit. So tune in for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. I always have a blast playing these games for you all. Alright, I'm Colorful Artie, and I'm signing out now. Thank you all so much for watching these videos. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day. And may God bless you wherever you are.